Sí, el amarillo con ese, mi amor, ese sigue, ¿cierto? Sigue aquí después de verde amarillo, dame ese. Spanish. They're Latinos, like me. I'm not supposed to go there, but I will go. Let's do it. No one coming to tell me off? Now that I saw those fellow Latinos there speaking Spanish, which by the way, was a complete fluke, uh, I did not program that, I want to ask you a question. If I give you the sentence, Latinos are, then just an empty line. Go to the comments below and write, you know, Latinos are, and whatever you're thinking, whatever comes to your mind. I know what people say about us, especially in Europe, that we are impunctual, that we can be unreliable, but I'm also happy because many people say that we are cheerful and uh, that we are friendly. So at the end of the day, you kind of like take it or leave it. But I think that your opinion on Latinos is gonna be determined by how much contact you've had with us. For example, Spanish people are gonna have a different opinion about Latinos than let's say Latvians, which makes me think if there are any Latinos in Latvia. Ah, who am I kidding? We are like ants everywhere. Is this closed? Well, first of all, tripods are not permitted. Oh, this is like the Princess Diana Memorial Palace or something. They just told me that I cannot, I cannot film it. Anyways, so even if you think you know a lot about Latinos, today we're gonna talk about five secrets that you won't believe about Latinos. Boom! Chesh Luja! What's up, people? Hola! Vigo's Dad here. Welcome to another episode. Some months ago, I recorded an episode titled Five Myths uh, About Latinos in Latin America. Uh, you can find the link up here. Uh, and in that episode, I told you guys, uh, you know, who are the Latinos, the, the, the origin of the name, differences between Latinos and Hispanics. I also told you um, um, the countries that comprise Latin America. But one thing I didn't tell you was how many Latinos are there in the world. Well, there's 700 million Latinos in the world. That means that we are 9% of the overall population of the world. That is a lot of people. Yet, there is so much more to discover about Latinos. Do you know why? Because Latinos are a group of people from many, many countries, 33 to be exact. Do you know how many countries are there in Europe? Well, 44. That's just 11 more countries than in Latin America, which leads me to the first secret that I want to tell you about Latinos. So secret number one is that most Latinos have never visited other Latin American countries. According to a study done by the Spanish bank BBVA in 2020, around 215 million people in Latin America live in poverty, out of which 38 million live in extreme poverty. That is around 35% of the Latin population. Latin America is a region with a very high poverty index. And although granted, it, there are many countries that are developing and uh, some cities in those countries can rival some cities in Europe, this is not the norm. And because of this high level of poverty, many people cannot afford to travel. And when I mean travel, I'm not talking to another country, I'm talking traveling to another city inside their own country. If you can believe that. So forget about going to some other country, even if it's a neighboring one. Many Europeans don't know this and actually find it fascinating because, you know, they get to travel inside the continent and, and go to other cities, to other countries and vacation and spend some nice holidays. But sadly, that is not the same for Latin America and Latin people. Though Latin America and Europe share something that is unique to them, which is the fact that it's a relatively large landmass with many, many countries that are not huge in total area. For example, in Asia and Africa, the countries themselves are huge. If you want to travel, let's say, from Bangkok to Delhi, it's gonna be around 4,000 kilometers, a ridiculously long distance that would take around 72 hours to drive, according to Google Maps, which I don't really believe in, because given all the unforeseen things that might happen, I'm thinking it's more like the double that amount of time. Whereas if you want to travel from Buenos Aires, Argentina to Lima, Peru, it's going to be around 50 hour drive and it covers the same amount of kilometers, more or less. And the same thing happens in Europe. And this is the reason why it's so hard for Europeans to understand how come Latinos have never gone on a road trip and visited all the countries in, in Latin America. But you know what? The logistics are a little bit complicated. 
I myself have never been to South America and I've only been to a handful of countries in Latin America. To begin with, it's not cheap and if you want to go, let's say, from Santo Domingo to somewhere in South America, you probably have to take a flight connecting in Panama and then go to your final destination. And in the end, it's probably going to be more expensive than if you, want, if you were to go to Europe. So secret number two is the Latino health paradox. The Latino paradox is an epidemiological paradox that refers to the finding that Latin Americans tend to have health outcomes that paradoxically are comparable to, or in some cases better than, those non-Hispanic white counterparts, even though Hispanic and Latinos have lower income and education. We know that universally, lower socioeconomic status is associated with worse population health and higher death rates. The paradox usually refers to, in particularly, to lower mortality among Latinos, especially in comparison with the non-Hispanic whites. There are multiple hypotheses trying to explain the reason for this paradox. Like for example, there's one called the Salmon Bias, which tries to explain that Latinos tend to go back home to their country of origin uh, at the end of their lives, which statistically renders them immortal in the country that they were residing at before they left. And with this, lowering the, the statistics on uh, Latino mortality rates. There's another very interesting one called the healthy migrant hypothesis, which establishes that usually the strongest and fittest members of the society are the ones that are more prone to migrate. And finally, there's the health experts that have the hypothesis that the reason for the paradox is because of the Latino eating habits, which, you know, it has a very high amount of legume consumption, like beans and lentils. You would imagine that because we all speak Spanish, we understand each other perfectly, don't you? And that is partially true. Any Latino can travel to any country in Latin America and possibly understand 95% of what is being spoken to them. Ah, maybe 90%. Wait, 90%? The moment that the language prevailed in the different countries has a lot to do with it, as well as the influence of native languages and European immigration. There are many, many words and phrases that have a completely different meaning in the different countries. Let's take, for example, the word cuero. In Costa Rica, it means someone of unpleasant aspect. In Nicaragua, it means a woman that hasn't had any sexual relationships yet basically a virgin. In Panama is when you agree to do something with someone. In Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Colombia, it means a prostitute. And this doesn't only happen with words, it happens with whole phrases where almost every word in the sentence is foreign to you, even though you speak the same language. Oh, and let's not forget accents. Dominicans, we speak extremely fast and we chop words. If you go on holidays to Dominican Republic and you think you speak a little Spanish, I promise you, you're gonna go back home and you're gonna request a refund from your language teacher. Guys, when I say the word invention or inventors, what countries come to your mind? To mine, Switzerland, Germany, the US, Japan. These are countries with a big amount of patents per capita. And as much as I love Latin America, I don't necessarily think of inventions or inventors when I think of it. And I'm gonna take a guess that you probably agree with me. That is, unless you know something that we don't know. I know I know, but do you know? Do you know what I know? It doesn't matter if you don't know. I'm here to let you know that maybe there are some things that you did not know about uh, inventions in Latin America. Too many knows, I know. I bet you didn't know that Latin America has produced some of the most ingenious inventions of our time. The problem is that research and development are still relatively low because there is lack of investment. Compared to the US, for example, where 60% of the value of manufacturing comes from a sector of high-level knowledge, in comparison with Latin America, where most of the value of manufacturing comes from you know, manual labor and hard labor. However, things are starting to improve Innovative startups are gaining momentum and there is a plan in place to try to bridge that gap of innovation between Latin America and other big areas of the world. Now, if we go a little bit back in time, we can find some really cool innovations that were either created by a Latino or in Latin America. Let's see.
first invention that you possibly did not know that was created in Latin America or by a Latino was by a gentleman called Guillermo Gonzalez Camarena, born in Guadalajara, Mexico, an electrical engineer. He was the person responsible for creating, inventing color television. Another great invention that has saved many, many lives was created by a Peruvian named Carlos Castillon. He invented the artificial neonatal bubble designed to improve intensive medical care for high-risk newborns. In 1956, a Mexican named Luis Miramontesco invented the first oral contraceptive pill. Do you see those very annoying codes that you have to input online when you're trying to log in somewhere and they are like a combination of letters and numbers and they are all like in scribble form and you cannot distinguish if it's a zero or an O? Those are called CAPTCHA codes. Those are the brainchild of a Guatemalan-born doctor named Luis Von An. Julio Palmas was an Argentinian vascular radiologist. He invented the expandable stent balloon used to treat cardiovascular disease. In 2006, he was immortalized in the National Inventors Hall of Fame. And finally, the artificial heart, created by Dr. Domingo Liotta, a son of two Italian immigrants born in Argentina. And in 1969, he created the first artificial heart that was successfully transplanted into a human being. You can find his creation on display in the Smithsonian Museum. <laughs> okay, number five is crazy racial diversity. First, let's clarify the difference between race and ethnicity because for the longest time, I found myself also confused with this. So I, I think maybe some of you might too. So let's get it out of the way. Race is usually associated with biology and linked with physical characteristics such as hair texture or skin color. Ethnicity, on the other hand, is linked with cultural expression and identification. For Latinos, identity is multifaceted, multidimensional. For some, it's defined by you know, their, their ancestors' country of origin, you know, their parents, if they're Mexican, if they're Dominican, if they're Peruvian. But one common thing is that Latinos consider ourselves one race. I know we are a mix of races, but we already identify as this one thing. We share commonalities, we share differences, but we identify as this thing called Latinos. Multiracial identity is not only a reflection of the racial backgrounds of one's family tree, but also a reflection of the social and cultural factors shaping how you were raised, how do you see yourself, and, and how the world sees you. An interesting question is, how do we Latinos believe that, let's say, a random stranger walking by the street sees us racially? Oh, I'll tell you, when I was living in Austria, I got several comments of people asking me if I was from Egypt. I guess, to them, I look Arabic. And I'm sure that if you ask different Latinos, you're gonna get many, many different answers because we all look different, we have different racial background. It doesn't really matter if uh, I am 60% European, 20% African, it, it really doesn't matter. You feel like a Latino. And this, I don't know, sociologists would know, I'm not a sociologist, but I think in the future, the Latino population is gonna to grow to such a big number that they're gonna to have to do a different classification of, of even what a, a racial identity is based on your cultural and social background. Let me show you this very interesting table. So here we see a racial groups according to self-identification. On the column to the left is the country, right? Uh, there are not all the countries, but this is just gonna be as an example. And then as we go from left to right, we have the different columns. They have mestizo, white, mulatto, black. I'm gonna quickly explain. Mestizo is a racial classification used to refer uh, to someone that is a combined European and indigenous American ancestry, okay? Um, so then you have white, self-explanatory. Then you have mulatto, who is a racial classification to refer to people of mixed African and European ancestry. After that is black, which is self-explanatory. Then it's Amerindian, who are the indigenous peoples of the Americas, and at the end, Asian. So if we go, for example, the first country, Argentina, and you see in percentage-wise how they identify, and once again, this is self-identification. So Argentinians identify 15% mestizo, 73% white, well, only 1% mulatto and 1% black, 
Let's, in comparison, this, for example, now choose Brazil. They consider themselves 45% white, 18% mestizo, 15 and 15% mulatto and black. There's a very, very small percentage of Amerindian and Asian. But then let's say, for example, a country like Ecuador, they themselves identify 78% mestizo and only 5% white and 3% black mulatto. So it's very, very interesting. This is a great table because it, it shows you how we identify ourselves, how do we see ourselves. It's a very big mix and depending on where you're from in Latin America, uh, it, you know, the historical background of that country is gonna ha have a major effect on how the, the members of society identify themselves. It's, it's interesting, it's very interesting. I learned a lot by looking at this chart and actually making this this video on this particular uh, you know secret. So once again, I hope you also learned something. Boom, that's all guys, that's the end of the episode. I hope you liked it. I wanna say thank you to you guys because you keep coming back every week, you, you watch the, the YouTube channel and it gives me the motivation to you know come up with these episodes that make me grow. Sometimes I think I know about something, but you know, I like to do a little bit of research and I end up learning so much. Once again, thank you. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for sharing, okay? For next week, I have a surprise for you guys. You're not gonna believe where I'm gonna wake up, but that's gonna be next week. See you, bye-bye.